Buongiorno, benvenuti a questo. Good morning and welcome to this conference, the second conference promoted by the Intergroup for the Subsidiarity and it follows uh, yesterday's meeting, yesterday's conference uh, where we had the participation of uh, parliamentary people and uh, Subsecretary Mr. Giorgetti. I'm going to introduce you the uh, speakers for today and I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Maratin. member of the Italian Parliament, and then Mr. Speranza, the President, Ms. Barbara Saltamartini, Mr. Rampelli, Vice President of the Chamber of Deputies, and Mr. Quayulo, the President of CONAI, National Packaging Consortium, and also Mr. Vittadini, the president of the Foundation for Subsidiarity, who was yesterday with us uh, in our previous meeting. As I said before, this conference today follows yesterday's conference. And if you were here yesterday, you heard why we wanted to create this uh, group for subsidiarity, this intergroup, and uh, here with us uh, uh, we have also Mr. Fabrizio Lupi, Maurizio Lupi, sorry, that I want to thank personally because he promoted uh, our intergroup for the subsidiarity. And uh, a lot of uh, MPs promoted this uh, intergroup and they also wanted to explain the reasons why we created this uh, interparliamentary group and uh, they also wrote an article on an Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera. It was very important because it uh, gave us the reasons why, the, the reasons for the existence of this uh, intergroup. We are um, a country where nobody lives alone, we are all interconnected and what is the consequence of this? First of all, we cannot be passive subjects when facing this economic development that we are having all over the world. If you think of different countries in the world that are growing right now and who are developing and uh, they are becoming new subjects uh, in the international scenario. On the other hand, the MPs uh, added some remarks uh, concerning the structural crisis that uh, uh, affected our countries over the last few years and uh, the most important crisis of all is the crisis that affected uh, the local bodies, uh, for example, trade unions uh, or uh, business associations. Uh, over the last few years, uh, they played an important role to connect the various parts of the, the different parts of the society and of our country. They were so important for us, they were so important for Italy, but they were affected by this crisis. We are undergoing a deep crisis in this sense and our intergroup focused on different themes, on different issues. We want to get back to subsidiarity and among these different issues and problems that we want to face, uh, we have the South, uh, um, we also deal with uh, um, educational emergency, we also focused on the new welfare system and uh, on the need for a renewal of the autonomies. 
but today we're going to focus on the south uh, as we said on the south of our country what kind of future for the south i'm now going to give the floor to mr vittadini and uh, he's gonna start with the report written by the intergroup for the subsidiarity and a lot of people cooperated um, and give the, gave their contribution to this report and uh, I am to this report sorry and I am deeply convinced that we need to change our perspective when we talk about the south of our country because the south is not to be considered a periphery anymore the south of Italy must be considered as the center from a global perspective so we need to change our perspective our idea yesterday subsecretary mr giorgetti said that we need a differentiated system also on a regional regional basis and Maybe it would be interesting discussing that. We need to find a fiscal federalism and cultural federalism. And there is also another issue, and this is why we invited here the president of uh, the National Packaging Consortium. There is something new that we need to take into account the theme of sustainability over the last few years especially over the last 10 years it has become a fundamental aspect of all businesses so subsidiarity and sustainability might might play a vital role in the recovery of the south now i leave the floor to mr vittadini and he's gonna start um, giving his speech Adesso facciamo partire le slide. The report shows two aspects on the one hand the emergency of the south of italy and on the other hand the possibility for a change let's start talking about a first level demographic crisis as you can see people living in the south of italy we have the current population the actual population right now and the one in the future in 20 years one and a half million people so a lot of people living there right now what does it mean aging of the population and in 50 years the average age will grow by from 43 to 51 what does it mean this means a demographic crisis and also an economic crisis because if fewer people work then less people can take care for the elderly we have people who are getting poorer and poorer so this is very heavy this is a significant crisis second aspect we are losing our human capital as you know in italy we are um, we have decided to get the invalsi they are a national based tests for our high schools and the results of the tests in the south are always always show less quality compared to the results in the north and in the center of Italy so what does it mean that a lot of people in the south decide not to study anymore and this is true both for high school and for university a lot of people drop out of school 
and so we have fewer graduates uh, in the south of Italy. And what is the consequence of this? That education is important and we need to take care of it because education plays a vital role in the development of the economy for Italy. Also, there is a new phenomenon, a new aspect, which is internal migration. If you think of the cities in the north of Italy, a lot of people from the south go to the north. They go, for example, to Milan. That has changed a lot over the last few years. Of course, we have very good cities and very good universities in the south, but people and students, they are afraid they're not going to get any job there. So this is why they go up and they decide to move north. A third aspect, poverty. Absolute and relative poverty rates are higher in the south compared to the north. Especially if we consider the little towns with more of 50,000 inhabitants. So we have big cities in the south with high poverty rates. A fourth aspect, employment. The employment rate 44.8%, it is lower compared to the north of Italy and uh, is the worst in Europe. The unemployment rate is even worse. So if we consider all of these different crises, uh, unemployment, education, uh, economic crisis, uh, well, think of the youth. The youth unemployment rate uh, accounts for the 46.6%. Uh, and it's still high. So it is a very difficult situation for people who drop, for young people, we have 1,800,000 people who are called NEAT, people who do not work and do not study. And also 3 million people, 3 million of young people who are still living with their own parents and who don't get their own apartment. So, as you can see in this image, we summed up all these indexes. As you can see, there is a diversification um, in terms of the territory and of the different Italian regions. Some of the regions are performing worse than others. So, what can we do? What can we do? This is a vertical crisis. And we need to do something radical. We created this project and we decided to call it Federico II. What is the main idea of this project? Is the idea of the south as the center of the Mediterranean Sea. As you know, Federico II, he decided that Palermo would be the capital of Italy because it was the central area of Europe. It was a meeting point for Jewish people, for Muslims, for Christians, and it had a fundamental importance. Look at the map and look where our south, the south of Italy is. The south of Italy is at the center of different countries, different countries And it is surrounded by countries that want to develop and still our unemployment and demographic rate are, rates are lower compared to the countries surrounding it. But now I'm going to also talk to you about different aspects. There is something strange. We are having a first economic recovery and it was more present in the south compared to the north. If you think of new startups, uh, if you think of new recoveries, uh, of new profits, uh, they were higher in the south and not in the north. Why does it happen? Well, 
thinking of what Mr. Romeo was saying yesterday when he talked about a vertical subsidiarity and also Miss Gelmini, she used to talk about that concept, we can think of a united Italy and not a differentiated Italy, not a divided Italy between North and South. The South can find its own qualities in, his in its infrastructures and, its, its, and in its territory. I'm going to explain you this concept. First of all, over the last few years, the Suez Canal was widened. So we are having more ships coming to the Mediterranean. And what does it mean that the Mediterranean Sea becomes central once again, as it was in the past? And this is something that is changing European perspectives because, for example, the Germans are starting to understand this and also the Chinese. I read in the newspaper that the Chinese want to get the uh, Trieste Harbour. So our harbours, especially if we consider the Mediterranean Sea, they are becoming more and more important. What do we need? Of course, we need harbors, we need infrastructures, we need railways, because of course if you get there, if you get to the south of Italy from uh, from abroad and then you don't have the infrastructures that are needed, then how can you carry your goods? How do you take your foreign goods to the center of Italy? So we need new infrastructures, we need new railways so that the south might gain his importance again in terms of uh, commerce and trade. So this is the first thing that we need. Secondly, the theme of power. Power in Italy costs 40% more compared to Europe as a whole. And why is the South important for its geographical location. Well, it's important for different types of sources of energy, for example, uh, um, pipelines, uh, solar panels, uh, plasma gasification, wind powers. So this is a great chance, this is a great occasion and we must to use it wisely. Thirdly, Southern universities, the universities in the south of Italy. If I was the Ministry of Education, I would um, make an investment. I would provide grants to students from South Africa so that they can go to the south of Italy and study there. Why? Because if those foreign students decide to study in Italy and not in London or Paris, for example, we are creating new bonds, we are creating new boundaries. Think of the most important cities in the south of Italy, very ancient cities, very ancient universities with valid professors. We must use them and we must, we must become trainers for foreign students. Uh, this is a good investment uh, because one of the problems with uh, our internationalization is that we're always, we're always calling ourselves off but we must become a country that uh, invite other people uh, to come to us and we must uh, invest in schools, in the new generations uh, We must fill the gap, the gap that can be filled only with the education of people. Uh, fourthly, a quality agriculture. Think of the Nero d'Avola, a very famous wine, uh, a very famous Italian wine. The South uh, had to invent, had to create uh, the quality wine due to the crisis because nobody used to buy our wine anymore. We needed to invent new products or to um, give them a new qualification. And this is good for Italy because we are having now a transformation. We are 
uh, undergoing a transformation in terms of uh, agriculture, in terms of cultures, uh, and this is good for us because we can uh, create new products for the entire world, but of course we need uh, uh, the restoration of forests and uh, a valorization of the environment. Um, also, we need to talk about the quality of tourism. Think of the south of Italy. We have beautiful landscapes, we have a beautiful sea, uh, beautiful mountains, uh, Gran Sasso, Maiella. We have beautiful cities, we have uh, art, which is quite important. It is not comparable to the United States, for example, what we have in the south of Italy. If you go to the south of Italy, if you go there, if you go to the mountains, if you go to the sea, um, you think of the ancient populations of the Mediterranean Sea, if you think of the uh, cookery, if you think of our tradition, we have lots of things that we can use. We could have the better tourism in the world, the best, sorry, tourism in the world, of course, we need something. For example, we need people working there who are able to speak English because there are foreign tourists who speak English and go there and they want to be able to communicate. So, for example, our waiters, they need to be able to speak English. We can get tourists from all over the world. Then the small and medium enterprises, they are quite important for the South. For example, we had a very good project, thanks to the De Vito law, that allowed some small businesses to work properly and to make profit. And uh, there's also been a change of perspective in terms of businesses. Uh, today we don't think of big businesses anymore. Today we can think of uh, small uh, businesses that have uh, a very high quality. So we need to help the southern startups who are creating very good, who are who have very good ideas and we need to take advantage of the capabilities of the people working there in those uh, startups and of course also infrastructural and uh, um, service uh, changes are needed. For example, without the internet you cannot do anything. And then natality rate. For example, we must invest, we must support families who are having little children, who are, who are having babies. We must support them through investments and through a public help. We need to help those young parents who want to work, but at the same time have their own babies and they don't know what to do. Of course, you can have children if you are able to uh, have them, if you have money, if you have a ho house, uh, if you have uh, a mm, social support, let's say. Uh, also another aspect is our structural money. We use less than 5% of the money from the European Union. Less than 5% we used less than 5% of the European structural money, of the European funds, so this is a problem. We need to work together and we need to use wisely the funds from the European Union. Of course we need uh, short-term interventions, but also structural interventions. We need to do something as, for example, what we did in the 1950 where different parties agreed and worked together to help the economic growth. So we can work together. If we work together, there is a possibility to go out of this crisis. Um, we must cooperate, we must work together. The public and the private, they must work together. The state must work together with the uh, local bodies uh, 
So this idea, the method of uh, cooperation is important. If you have a common purpose, you know how to cooperate. And what's our purpose? You need to help the South. The South must be requalified. And I want to, to, to conclude with this. We talked about, uh, we always uh, uh, criticized the money given to the South, but it used to work, that system used to work. Why? Because there was an agreement between the public and the private. So, of course, we needed to help the South and we spent a lot of money to help the South. We were criticized for that. And maybe we made mistakes, but what we learned from that experience is that we can work together. We need to create a pact for the Italian development and it goes beyond any political division or any political difference and this is important for our country. Thank you, Giorgio Vittadini. I would like to take this opportunity to mention the role the Foundation for Subsidiarity will play in the future in this work. One of the main important points the intergroup has detected is the common attention we need to pay to the South. We chose the South to be the, at the heart of our of our report as foundation for the subsidiarity together with other bodies we will carry out technical checks and also share ideas that will come up during several discussions we have talked about several aspects, many interesting aspects. I would like only to emphasize that he provided us with very interesting practical ideas, practical suggestions, which are linked to the meeting's title. He mentioned cooperation. He mentioned the striking data on our youth. We talked about it yesterday, about youth education. We talked about it with other colleagues. We talked about the economics in the South as a possibility for our future development. So it would be very interesting to keep all of this in mind even during the following speeches. This speech was really, really interesting. Mr. Toccafondi yesterday mentioned the fact that passion is what moves politics, but desire is the actual gasoline. So talking with passion is important to set up an economic program for the south of Italy, but to do this we need to start from the desire of each one of us which is not about being competitive, but about helping each other and supporting each other. Now I would like to give the floor to the following speaker who comes from the south, so he is Quite an expert on this. I would like to give the floor to Luigi Martin, member of the Italian Parliament. Thank you very much for your invitation. This is a very important issue. And I would like to start from some comments on the south of Italy. When I was a child, I heard that the south had to become a new platform for our country. and. I thought you could only dive from a platform, so I didn't really understand. But 
time went by and many politicians talk about the South as a possible platform for our country, new platform, without uh, providing practical policies. What can I say about the South? It is, a, it is not a story about failure. It is a story of isolated uh, positive events, but still we haven't reached our goal. So what can we do about it? We weren't able to achieve a structural excellence and to be const uh, constant and consistent. So what can we do? I would like to focus on one aspect, which is not about public funds. I'm convinced that no Italian problem can be solved only through public funds. Maybe you read, you've read a very interesting book by Antonio Menna, a journalist for Il Mattino. Steve Jobs for Senato Napoli. It is about two young people from the city of Naples. They live in Naples. And the book is about a project that fails because of several uh, reasons. So it is not really about public funds. I am not sure about the percentage but I have to say that part of the European funds are not used in the South. So what almost no one says is that many of our problems are due to the fact that we do not spend enough, we do not invest enough, and we do not make good investments. If we were able to deeply understand our policies and our politics, we would understand, then we would see that all of our failures, and especially the failure of the last 25 years, is only about public governance. We can have the best policies, the best ideas, irrespective of public funds. But it is all about two things, public governance, and by this I mean institutions ruling the territories, and the ruling class that has those bodies under control. We, over the last 25 years, we could mention at least two main failures. I mentioned one yesterday. Yesterday, a representative of the Five Star Movement also talked about this. He talked about a failure of the state of how our state manages everything. And this led to, for example, the collapse of the bridge in Genoa. Because no one understood the importance of the skills you needed to manage that aspect. In this case, the building of that bridge. The word federalism has been used for 25 years now, but there has never been a political representative who hasn't said the word federalism. Everyone is applauded when they talk about this, but there are no practical initiatives. We do not have a real federal system. We have a very complex, confused system, and this doesn't depend on whether a party is from the right, from the left. It really is not about this. There are several decrees, several laws uh, taken by both the right-wing parties and the left-wing parties. It is important 
to understand why we made these mistakes, what went wrong with our public governance, why didn't we understand that what is a real federalism? Because real federalism stands on two pillars, autonomy and responsibility. And those who support autonomy do want to be responsible, to take responsibility, and vice versa. And we also thought that federalism meant, well, I can give you some autonomy, of course. It is not about this. The concept of subsidiarity changes according to the needs of the different markets. In the 60s, we had just, uh, World War II had just finished and we still had to go through several development periods. We had to go through an economic development and after the so-called economic miracle, something broke during the 60s. Something went wrong and there came inflation, public debt. In the 90s, instead, we had new problems and our growth stopped. But a, what can a decentralized government do? Thanks to subsidiarity. Some policies, for example, environmental policies, have always been carried out very well, but others, because of the new needs of the market, weren't. In the 90s, our market became global, and we didn't understand that we had to change our ab habits even before uh, doing business, before creating banks, uh, building schools, uh, creating policies and so on. We thought it was just a temporary period. And nowadays, someone even says that there wasn't any change ever. You shouldn't adapt to the world, or if you need to, I will protect you. They say this, but they don't say that a change actually took place, and it can be a good change. Change can be good if we are able to do it properly. So, in the past, maybe it made sense to manage everything uh, locally, but now this doesn't really make sense because now it is more effective for some policies to be created and managed by the state. More autonomy doesn't mean a faster growth, faster development, and I can say this because of my personal experience. I'm not really happy with the Article 116 of our Constitution because I do not believe that a new federalism means that out of, out of uh, our 15 special regions, 13 asked for more permissions to manage some areas. This is not what I dream about. I think that autonomy and responsibility have to go hand in hand. So, yes, you can have autonomy on several fields, of course, but you have to take on responsibility for those fields. The English word accountability cannot be translated into uh, Italian. And this is very interesting. It means there's no real accountability, no real responsibility. So I think that these regions should take on responsibility for what they ask for. I want a system where every president of a region can have several tools and use them as he wants. 
tools that they can use only in a specific field. So that we can actually take steps forward. In this way, our citizens will better understand how our local reality and works and how our state works. We um, brought our standard needs up to 45%. And this was a huge improvement. But, but still, what was lacking was a link between autonomy and accountability. When something goes wrong in a town, for example, they don't take on responsibility. Let's just think about what has happened over, over the last few days. If a town doesn't use effectively the funds and the tools the state provides it with, then it is their responsibility. They should take care of this. Now, to conclude, every level of government should have specific skills and use them properly, according to their needs, for example. Just think of what happened with our constitutional referendum in 2016. It is no, it is all about effective funds, funds that have to be used properly in all the towns. So, for example, in 2016, our country wasn't really ready for such reform, for such a change. With this, I don't want to say that who supports responsibility doesn't support autonomy. Of course not. But what we have to understand, it is not about more money. We need an effective cooperation between institutional and local bodies and men and women that can use all of the tools effectively. So a good ruling class. So maybe one of our biggest failures is the fact that we have lost the processes of selection and training of our ruling class. And when change came, we didn't choose and select a ruling class. But this is another hit. This is another story. Thank you very much. Thank you. You talked about the South, the future of the South, two very important subjects. You talked about institutions. I would like to remind you that one of the points of our manifesto is about our towns, our territory. So I'm sure that we will keep on discussing these points and aspects in the future. And this is very important also for the vertical dimension of subsidiarity. But I would like to remind you that there is also a horizontal dimension which is also very important to us, but we have no time to discuss it now. I really appreciated your speech. I would like to give the floor now to Roberto Speranza, National Coordinator of LEU. He's a member of the intergroup, and I would like to give you the floor. Thank you for being here. 
I would also like to mention a very important member of this intergroup who couldn't be here, unfortunately. Mr. Roberto Speranza, I think this intergroup was extremely, is extremely useful, irrespective of the party we belong to. On the contrary, our differences are very important and make us discuss and pay attention to every single subject. I think that our public administration has not been able to make the necessary leap yet, to take a very important leap. I think we should work together, despite the differences, to say something important. There's no South without North, and there's no North, north without South. We don't often think about this, because both in the North and in the South, we have people thinking that they can spare each other. Someone thinks that the North could be the richest place in the world, but it isn't because there's this, this burden of the South of Italy that is an obstacle, and so Italy cannot be the rich country it was um, bound to be. But it, we could actually think that the South has many resources, natural resources, for example, but still some people think that even though there are these resources, the South cannot develop because of the North sucking its resources. These ca this kind of opinions really had an influence, an impact on our work, on our country. Our working group started by the idea that started from the idea that our country can develop only if North and South go hand in hand. And they should never be against each other. You have just been shown some figures which are not really positive. We could maybe talk about a division a silent division. When you see the figures regarding kindergartens, infrastructures, quality of citizenship, keeping, taking all of this into account, I can only think of a silent division. And it almost seems that Italy is divided into two different countries, two empty shells. Our politicians instead should try and come up with new solutions. Now we don't really have the time to find miraculous solutions, but I would like to make some suggestions. Keep taking into account what has already been said. I believe that the south of Italy needs more state and more market. It may sound strange, it may sound as a contradiction if there's more state, state then there's less market and vice versa. But instead I'm convinced that we need more state and more market at the same time. For example, we need to fight against criminality, against mafia. This is one of the most important issues of our time. We should stop criticizing our politicians and instead try and find a solution to this very important subject. And also infrastructures, highways. I come from the region of Basilicata. It took me six, seven hours to come here, to, way too much. 
And then also more investments in uh, schools, in education, in university, investments in public health care. When nowadays health care, it looks like health care will no longer be public and accessible for everyone. Thousands and thousands of southern families are forced to go to northern hospitals to take care of their relatives. This is a huge problem. So this is what state is for me. It is fighting against criminality, investments in infrastructures, in education, and filling the gap of inequality. And also more market, because the state has always been present in the history of the South, but not always in the right way. There have been several phases of state intervention. First of all, the fund for the south of Italy, then in the 70s, the creation of regions, and then in the 90s, when the European funds arrived. Three very important mo moments when public funds came, huge amounts of public funds. But how was this money spent? Way too often and this led to a waste of public funds. Those who ruled had this money in their hands and they used it as they wanted instead of investing in the development of the regions. So, yes, the south of Italy took some steps forward in the past, but it is not developing right now. We need to make a cultural change. So when I say more markets, this is what I mean. We need more direct mechanisms, more direct procedures, so that our public funds are spent more effectively without necessarily thinking only about public consensus. And also, what does the South need? The South, yes, needs support, change, infrastructures, but we also need to change our point of view on the South. The South needs a new image. We used to think that we needed a new figure, powerful figure, with a magical wand who could save us all. A kind of messiah. But I'm not I do not agree with this. The South needs to change its mindset. What do I mean by this? By this, I mean we don't need messiahs or magical ones. We need common people who care about their region and who every day work for the sake of their community. So, not an hero, but an anti-hero, a common person. Now, within this sad situation, I would also like to talk about some people who were actually successful. For example, Ilva. Ilva makes, forces people to choose between, for example, work and environment. This is not right. So this is one of the negative aspects I was talking about. But despite these difficulties, as I was saying, we have a chance to take a step forward. I would like to talk about a city in the south of Italy, a city which is very important to me, the city of Matera, which in the 50s was called Italy's shame. There, there are caves and it was a city 
populated not only by people. In those caves, there were not only families, but also uh, chickens and pets and other kinds of animals. It was the time when our country was, was struggling after the war. Now Matera became, has become the world capital of culture. This is just incredible. And it shows that by facing problems together, we can solve them. And I think our work makes sense only if we keep this in mind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speranza, for your speech. It was very interesting and I was impressed, especially by what you said, uh, the need uh, not for a hero but uh, for um, common people. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's interesting because I think uh, it is our duty for our society and um, I was thinking about uh, Mr. Ranieri, he wrote uh, a very important book concerning Matera and uh, it reflects what you said. I will now give the floor to Miss Barbara Saltamartini, the President of the Committee for Productive Activities, Commerce and Tourism of the Chamber of Deputies and uh, she has uh, already took part in uh, our meeting um, so she's not a new person for us and uh, I'm really uh, glad she's here and I'll give the floor to her right now. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you, the Intergroup for Subsidiarity, and uh, I also want to say something about a friend of mine who is here, even though he belongs to another political party, and uh, he is not that busy anymore, and uh, he has finally started working again for the Intergroup for Subsidiarity, and uh, this is a great occasion, this is a great chance for us, because uh, we have a constant uh, meeting uh, with uh, different uh, MPs, with different political parties, uh, and uh, why is it important? Because uh, politics, according to me, has to do this, has to work for a greater good, has to provide answers to the evils of our society. This is uh, the duty of our politics. Uh, to get back to the idea of a national community uh, that despite some differences uh, is able to be unified. And I think this is what we need to do right now. Unfortunately, if you read the newspapers, uh, of course you you have uh, you are aware that there was another tragedy in the region of Calabria, other dead people, more deaths, and uh, this increases our sorrow, our pain. If you think of the recent tragedies uh, that we had in our country, well, thinking of this suffering, thinking of this pain, we should have been united. We should have been one country but this hasn't happened and I think that we should get back to that brotherhood to that unification among all the different regions of Italy it's about a will to work for our country's good for a greater good this is what we need to do this is what it is just and that we must do and why do I say this because when we talk about the south of Italy we need to change our perspective. We, have, we need to have a wider perspective and a long-term perspective because I think that we have um, big, huge evils and a magic wound is not um, enough. A single law, one law is not enough. We need a cooperation and we need different interventions. For example, as we have already talked about this morning, if you think of the money that we gave to the South and they weren't used wisely, maybe they worsened the criminality and mafia activities in the South. This is why we need to have a long-term perspective, but we need to start from what we already have. I don't think the actions of the 
past of the previous political parties were bad or useless, but I don't like the image we gave of the South in the last few years because we, didn't, we have never talked about the uh, skills that the South has thanks to the richness of its territories, uh, thanks to the uh, cultural heritage uh, and to the uh, landscape that we have there. We didn't do this. We have always described the South of Italy as the as the point reached by a lot of foreign people especially from Africa and uh, nothing more this is the way this is the idea that we have of the south nowadays well we need to change our perspective. We need to give more importance to the infrastructures that we have in the south. There are not that many and this is a problem. Of course it's true, Matera has become the European capital of culture, but it's true that if you want to go to Matera today, uh, it's quite difficult to get there. And uh, it is strange because, you know, Matera is uh, the European capital of culture and you're not able to go there or at least not as easy as you go for example to Milan or Bologna or whatever but I also want to focus on another aspect I think that uh, in order to give another chance to the south we need to look back at what was done many years ago when uh, with our harbors uh, we opened uh, our ways to other cities uh, when Italy was the center of international trade between different countries different worlds if you think of the south we have Taranto Crotone very important harbors but if we do not make an investment there in those harbors if we don't invest in the infrastructures in those harbors and I'm happy that the current government has announced a new program for the infrastructure and maybe um, we should try and invest in something important we must make those harbors in the south capable of welcoming new trade companies, new businesses, navy businesses that need infrastructures in order to save money and time. For example, thanks to the widening of the Suez Canal, we save money and time by the 5% in terms of costs and by the 15% in terms of time. So we should give value to those harbors uh, by providing them with the needed infrastructures and uh, only by doing this we will be able to make a first step forward to solve one of the biggest problems in the south which is employment or better unemployment in Italy we are affected by a deep crisis which is the third wave of migration and it's the biggest that we have ever experienced. Today we're having a lot of people, our children, who are going away from Italy. 1,800,000 people who left Italy. And among them, more than the 60% went away from the south. And one out of two of them is a young person aged 16 to 30 years old and uh, so young people who leave Italy and this is uh, bad for us, it is bad for our economy, it is bad for our society, for our culture
And what's the consequence of those people leaving from Italy? Italy has no future. What do we have to do to keep young people in Italy, to prevent them from leaving, to prevent them from having the need to go abroad? Well, we need to give them jobs, we need to create uh, new workplaces, we need to create new jobs and how do we do that? Not only through new laws but by using our own territories, by creating new reforms, new programs uh, that enhance and give value to our regions and to our territories. And how do, do, how do we do that also if we invest in our education and training? Without these, we will never get uh, an economic development. Uh, human capital is the resource we need to invest in, especially in the South. We need to start all over again from the high school, from universities, and we have uh, very important universities in the South. Uh, think of, for example, the University of Bari that uh, works uh, with many, co uh, with many uh, partners uh, but we need to invest. The investment in training and research is vital. And at the same time, high schools and universities must provide quality to our students. High schools and universities need to take on the responsibility, a responsibility towards young people so that they can educate them. They need to invest in the important subjects to study at high school or at university. Subjects, they need to provide young people with skills that will enable them to have new jobs. So, a lot of issues, uh, economy, infrastructures, uh, education, uh, human capital, and also another big issue, and we have already talked about it, uh, the fight against mafia and uh, criminality. In order to get a development in the South, we need to fight against criminality, we need to fight for security. And uh, it is also related to our economy. So this is why I strongly believe that uh, what is needed today is uh, a long-term project. I also believe that uh, today our ruling class, since we are the um, since we are the political party now in Italy, we have a great responsibility. And what is it our duty? We need to create a cooperation between the north and the south. Uh, with a different perspective of the South. The South is not the South of Italy, the South. Our South is the center of the Mediterranean area. It is the center of an area which is uh, uh, rich and uh, wealthy and it is richer than we no, richer than we think. But how do we do that? Through political and economic uh, policies where the state, our state, takes on his responsibilities because we are sick and tired of uh, political parties uh, who don't take on their responsibility and don't do what they should do. First and foremost, for example, the control of everything and also we need the contribution of uh, our businesses, small and medium enterprises, uh, how do we help them through investment, uh, through new programs uh, of our government? Maybe new programs, uh, new perspectives uh, compared to the past. Uh, this is where we need to start from all over again. Thank you, Miss Saltamarini, Saltamartini.
it was very impressive to hear these words from you, from a president of a very important uh, committee. We're not running out of time, so I will now give the floor to Mr. Rampelli, Fratelli d'Italia, the Vice President of the Chamber of Deputies, uh, and uh, he's the representative, of course, of uh, our Parliament, uh, and uh, he was also named uh, before, I mean, not him personally, but the, the institution, the uh, Parliament. So we are happy we can now give the floor to the representative of the parliament. Uh, so uh, I'll give the floor to you now. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you this incredible event that every year grows and remains incredibly important. It is not something that is only lived passively. It is a place where ideas meet, where ideas come up. We hope this will lead to innovative ideas, innovative ideas. I would also like to thank Mr. Lupi, not only as a member of the interparliamentary group, but also as a friend. Everything that has been said is very important and is t leading us to concrete results. We have heard several points of view and I believe that these points of view can play a vital role to put into practice everything we've talked about and to improve our citizens' quality of life. As Vice President of the Chamber, it is very important for me to take part in this debate, but I also represent our institutions and this is very important for me. And there's nothing more satisfying and beautiful than representing our people's will. And this is done by the Parliament, the place chosen by our people through democracy. I will now come to go down to the nitty-gritty. Yes, there could be people governed by a parliament, but there could, no, there could be no government without a parliament. With this, I want to say the parliament is fundamental. So Mr. Giorgetti has a very important function. Of course, Giorgetti said everything he said for a reason, I have no doubt about this. But I believe that we should carry out some reforms to simplify the procedures in our parliament and to make our parliament's work easier. But Let's now talk about the South. I may say trivial things. I hope not, but I will probably repeat something you have already heard for several years now, for decades. But it is very important to do this, to repeat these things, to repeat some figures, to really understand what we're talking about in 2015, from 2012 to 2016, 783 people in four years moved from the south to the north. 
If you think about the last 16 years, this figure looks like a real exodus. Two million people, a huge figure. This group is divided into two categories. For example, 50% of this number is young people from 15 to 34 years old. Of course, some of them are not that young, but let's talk about youth. Let's call them youth. It is also people coming from Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. They start very dangerous trips. They come to Sicily, they reach the region of Calabria. They want to come to Italy, which they believe to be a door, a new possibility. And 20% of our university graduates move abroad. In the last six years, 140,000 people, and over the last 16 years, 400,000 people. These figures are striking. But we also have to take into account the political aspects. When we talk about high school and university graduates, we very often forget about many other migration flows that have characterized our history. These flows in the past took place because of the needs of our economy. But now we move abroad, we migrate for different reasons. We're talking about graduates going away. There's also another collater collateral damage, 2 billion euros that were wasted, went wasted in the south, which we're talking about money that was not properly invested in education in universities. So many young people left the South to go and be educated in other regions in the North. So this money went wasted because young people didn't stay there in the South to receive an education. Whereas the North, yes, needs this human capital. The human capital I was talking about before. So it's kind, it's like our country is divided into two different countries. There is a gap we cannot forget about. Otherwise, we will come to wrong conclusions. This doesn't mean that we shouldn't invest in the South. This is not the problem. Of course, investment must be properly used so that they can lead to concrete results. But I have already talked about an, ex an exodus, a migration flow. This happens because there's a huge gap, especially in employment. About 19% of people are unemployed in the south. In the north, this figure is less than 7%, whereas in central Italy, it is about 10%. So you see a huge employment gap, a structural gap, which is not going to go down over time if not by little. And also a gap regarding infrastructure. We should ask ourselves a couple of questions. 
when we talk about this issue. We should take into account an infrastructure of the north and try and find a respective infrastructure in the south. Of course, I'm not criticizing the choices we've made. It was vital to boost the north, the north of Italy and to link Italy to Europe thanks to the northern regions, through the northern regions. So we took care of our national interests, of course. We created huge infrastructures in our northern regions. We created very important and strategic infrastructures in the north. We can think about a lot of them, whereas when you think about infrastructures in the south, there are not many of them that come to mind. We had to choose a strategy and we chose the most effective one. But to meet everyone's need, it is important to invest in the South, to bet on the South. I'm not talking, not only talking about quality of life of citizens in the South, but also about general growth in our country, because if the South does well, then all of our country does well. If the South develops, then our country, for our country, it will be easier to take steps forward. There are then other important aspects. For example, some lists created by several bodies Some northern regions were considered very effective by these classifications. But there's a huge gap between northern and southern regions. So there's a gap in healthcare, employment. In the south, it is um, not that easy to set up a business, for example, and also a digital gap. The Alps and the Apennines have very similar situations regarding this field. There is no unequal distribution of our Wi-Fi, for example, it is, internet connection is not available everywhere. Privatization made it very hard to act sensibly, meeting everyone's need. So, we really have to change this. Another figure that really struck me, about 60% of young people are unemployed in um, Calabria, Sicily and Sardinia. But there are not only economic problems. Many studies have been carried out by very important people, very important researchers, very important institutions. Max Weber used to say that uh, doing business comes before capital. And doing business is possible. It is possible to do business only through a good organization. So when someone wants to grow, it is also about human capital. Someone else said that
The south is a rural area and therefore its rural tradition is an obstacle for its economic development. This was said by Banfield or Robert Potman, Potman who said that uh, without any human capital there can be no development. Or, uh, the World Bank, for example, and other institutions said, or OECD said that people are not interested in the political life of the country, there is no cooperation. There is no human capital, as I was saying, and so public services are not effective. There's no good education, no good justice. There are problems in childcare and many other fields. These are the consequences of the absence of human capital. Then other problems, corruption, for example, are very well known by everyone, but they are very difficult to fight against, because without investments, without proper reforms, then it is very difficult to do all of this. We should keep in mind that this gap should be filled to create a level playing field. I would like to remind you that over the last few years, the South has taken a huge step forwards. It got a huge amount of European funds. But we need to develop a sense of citizenship. People should, be, should feel accountable for what happens in their city, in their region. And the state should try and erase criminality and mafia from the south of Italy. Otherwise, anything similar to the Marshall Plan won't work. Every time there is a problem, we talk about a Marshall Plan. If we want to develop, to make, to support the South's development, we should do all of this. We talk about GDP and economics, but the first problem we need to tackle is criminality. So, to conclude, if you're creative and you know just a little bit of history, then it will be quite easy to understand the most effective strategy for our South. Palermo should be the Mediterranean Sea's capital. We should elect it as a link not between Italy and Africa, but between Europe and Africa. This would be a very effective geopolitical strategy. And we should take this opportunity. I believe that the South and the role of the South should be taken into account, for example, within the, relation, the framework of the relationships between Italy and Europe, Italy and Africa. In the South, there are many, many cultural, cultural sites. These are all very interesting cultural places. Our South is 
needs a new vision and thus it can become a center for research for our universities. It can become an extremely important place for all of the people coming from the south of the world. I think we need to work in several fields, in all the fields, to make a change, a concrete change, so that the South can stand back up. Of course, we're going through a very difficult time from an economic point of view. But Whereas for for many years we have talked about the South as an isolated part of Italy. Nowadays we have the chance to talk about the South of Italy as a part of the whole country, as a place of evolution, change and development. Thank you very much for your speech. You really made us understood the real meaning of today's meeting, today's event. I would like now to give the floor to Mr. Giorgio Quagliuolo. We invited him here because, as it has already been said at the beginning, the subject of sustainability, quality of life, are all aspects our consortium uh, takes care of. And this is all parts and parcels of today's growth. So, Today we'll be able to talk about the South as a chance of growth for the whole country. So I would like to give the floor to Mr. Quagliuolo. <laughs> yeah, my surname is difficult to pronounce, actually. <laughs> well, first and foremost, thanks for... Um, inviting me here, thanks to the Intergroup for Subsidiarity, thanks to the meeting, because you're giving me an opportunity to tell you what our business is, uh, what the CONAI, National Packaging Consortium business is nowadays. Uh, I was very impressed by the previous speeches, and uh, if I think of my everyday life, I'm a businessman, apart from being the president of uh, CONAI. I've been working in the South for uh, 60 years, uh, and uh, this is why I was impressed by your speeches. And uh, I would like to go on discussing these themes with you, because it's very interesting from a business point of view. There would be much more to say about this issue, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have time. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, CONAI and especially the um, CONAI's approach towards the South. Uh, what's the main idea? Well, we do believe that the South represents an opportunity and not a problem. What are we currently doing uh, in the South? Uh, well, let's start with uh, a general uh, scenario. Who are we? CONAI is a private consortium, a non-profit consortium, and uh, since 1957 we have reached uh, good, um, we have uh, fulfilled good objectives. Uh, we are working with uh, more than 50,000 companies, both um, in terms of manufacturers and uh, consumers. Uh, we have a um, system of uh, wide responsibility of the manufacturers uh, and it's a shared responsibility between the producers uh, and the consumers. Uh, so it's an operational responsibility, it's an economic responsibility for the 
good management of packaging and of waste and we share it with uh, all regions and uh, little towns so this is why we can talk about a shared responsibility it is important to say that we guarantee a universal system for universal markets. So what is it, a universal service? Well, we use all types of uh, uh, packaging waste from every location in Italy, from every place in Italy, and uh, under any circumstance. So, our goals were fulfilled, we reached them, and uh, we can now say that uh, Italy is a very good example uh, in Europe, and this is something which is widely recognized uh, uh, by all other European um, countries. Okay, in the first slide you can see that uh, since 1958 uh, were only one out of three packaging was uh, recycled. Today we have four out of five packaging that are um, recycled. What does it mean? That we did a very good job, a very high quality job and also, and let me say that, it was a job that uh, didn't imply significant costs if we consider especially other ways of uh, um, recovery at a European level. In the second slide you can see that uh, Italy is uh, one of the best countries uh, from the um, recycling point of view. As you can see the blue line represents the uh, recycling The red line are the waste recycled from a power point of view, whereas the green line is the uh, landfill. So, as you can see, we, we are in a very good position. For example, if you look at Finland, the landfill is zero. But Italy has some good results as well. If you think of uh, uh, the public opinion, uh, what do we say? That we need to get a zero percentage of uh, um, landfill, especially in Italy, because we're not a rich country as uh, other European countries, as France, for example. So I think that uh, we need to change our perspective. We need to get a more modern perspective going beyond the idea of zero percentage of landfill. In more than 30 years of activity we have uh, changed what was the previous method of uh, um, packaging recycling and uh, we managed to do that uh, thanks to an important agreement uh, which is the, called uh, um, Agreement Conai, where we help all little towns uh, in the uh, waste sorting. This is why we reached and uh, um, we reached very good results. And uh, what were the good um, aspects of our policy? Well, first of all, the responsibility of the different towns. The fact that we operate at a national level. And the fact that the quality of our work is high. Considering the quality of our work is important, especially if we think of waste sorting. Because waste sorting is the first step towards recycling and recycling is effective 
if we do a lot of recycling and if the waste sorting is a high quality waste sorting. This is why waste sorting and recycling are interconnected. Of course, Conai has worked in the south of Italy, especially in the south of Italy, which was somehow behind compared to the north. Another aspect that I want to stress is the subsidiarity uh, to the market because the different towns can um, join our agreement or get out of it. They are totally free to do that according to the rules of the market. If you look at the third slide, we realize that, uh, as we have already said, Italy is a country that um, has two different speeds. Of course, there are some areas in our country where uh, we recycle more than 80 kilos per inhabitant and per inhabitant and other areas where we have less than 40 kilos per inhabitant sometimes uh, even 15 or 12 kilos for example uh, as it happens in Sicily which is uh, the region which is uh, um, performing worst compared to the other regions so what do we want to do we want the South to become the protagonist of this activity of recycling because if we don't bridge the gap between the North and the South, it is difficult for us to uh, comply with the goals of the European Directive. Without the South, uh, it will be impossible for us to comply with uh, the European Directive. Of course, uh, um, some of the Southern region are still performing bad badly. And we have talked about the reasons for their situations, for the situation of the Southern regions. But we can solve those problems, the crisis that is affecting the South and by doing that we can help the South to recover, to have an economic recovery because by doing that we can create new jobs, we can um, make our population, our people richer And we can also have a human capital more and more specialized depending on the region they are living in. This is why we believe that the most important problems that need to be solved are first of all a lack of infrastructures. It's a well-known problem. We should change everything. We should change our perspective our models and uh, we could do that uh, thanks to the help of um, institutional and private subjects of private uh, businesses for example so here again a cooperation between the public and the private uh, so that we could have uh, um, effective infrastructures think about this for example waste that simply go to landfill, that are sent to landfills, well, sometimes it's difficult, for example, for the waste produced in Sicily, um, it cannot go to a Sicilian landfills or to other uh, landfills in the region because uh, sometimes they need to be taken to other regions, for example, Campania. So we should also implement new projects in the territory, we should promote a new culture, we should fight against divisions or fragmentations. As you know we have lots of um, conventions, we have lots of uh, uh, funds, we have lots of projects uh, provided by our uh, law but it is difficult for them to be implemented in the southern regions. Of course we are uh, carrying out a, an innovation process, we are developing our know-how, we want to um, improve our strategy for the south and uh, what do we do? We also invest 5 million euros per year in special projects. 
we provided um, more money in 2017 compared to 2016 to uh, regional towns because we want to help them. We are um, inventing new projects for the south, we want to help the new startups, we want to invest in the training of public administration and uh, I know I'm running out of time, just a few more aspects I want to stress. Okay, we're not going to focus on uh, slide number four. As I was saying, these projects that we have been carrying out, they gave us good results. For example, we had an improvement of the 12% in the south. If you think about national average, 62 kilos for per inhabitant, we have 67 in the region Campania, 61 in Puglia, 56 in Campania. So there has been significant improvement compared to the previous years in Italy. And we also had the support of public administration and this allowed us to get some extraordinary results and I really want to expand the good experience that we had had to other regions, for example in Cosenza, in Catanzaro where we reached the 65%, in Bari, in two neighborhoods of 50,000 inhabitants, we arrived at the 60% of waste sorting and then other countries, Potenza, Catania, etc. Um, so very good results in the south of Italy and uh, to conclude with, uh, we also started a collaboration with uh, the meeting, uh, the Rimini meeting. We wanted to be uh, eco-friendly and we started a new project which is called uh, Rimini 2020. It's a recycling project and we want these uh, exhibition to be more and more sustainable so for example we have uh, the waste sorting uh, of the waste produced here in the exhibition the use of renewable sources uh, mobility and every kind of aspect that can give a contribution uh, to our exhibition so that uh, uh, Rimini meeting might become more and more eco-friendly so I'm really running out of time. I think that if you are interested in the things that I said, uh, you can come to and visit us to our stand. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, but <laughs> you were the last speaker and uh, so you had fewer minutes compared to the previous speakers. Uh, thank you so much because um, it was very interesting your, sp your speech was very interesting I simply want to focus on what we must do now I was deeply impressed by all of you as I have already said you are all friends with uh, Mr. Lupi who is one of the promoter of our uh, group for the subsidiarity well the method uh, that we always use uh, is the relationship, is an encounter, is uh, a meeting with someone. This is our method. We know that uh, we carry out uh, this project, for example, the uh, subsidiarity group, thanks to the encounter, to the meeting with other people. So I really want to thank you all and uh, please come and visit us to the next uh, conferences uh, organized by the subsidiarity group.